Connor from Project BRZ here. Today I'm going to be showing you exactly how a blow off valve works and what it does on your car. So before we actually pull this one apart and show you how it works internally, we're going to have a look at the car itself and see how the actual induction system works on a boosted car. It's important to understand a few fundamentals before we actually look at the blow off valve. So let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so we're here in the engine bay of my BRZ here, which you can obviously see is boosted. There's a supercharger sitting there. Now, there are a few different types of supercharger and some of them use blow off valves and some of them don't. Uh, we won't cover the twin screw and root style superchargers in this video because typically they don't use a blow off valve anyway. And um, we'll just keep things simple to explain how the valve itself works in a typical setup. So for all intents and purposes in this video, the compressor side of my supercharger here is exactly the same as the compressor side of a turbocharger. The only difference being that a supercharger is driven by a belt and a turbocharger is driven by, by a um, turbine which is driven by exhaust gases. So if you're looking at just the compressor side, it's exactly the same. So um, yeah, don't think that this video is not relevant just because I'm looking at a supercharger because it's exactly the same setup. So what happens is the air comes in the intake, it's pressurized by the compressor wheel, and then the compressed air comes out of the outlet here. So the inlet's here, the outlet's here, that pressurized air comes out, and you can see there's the blow off valve sitting just there. Now that blow off valve can be anywhere on the system between the compressor and the throttle body. So that air comes through, goes through the intercooler, which is in the front bar there, which obviously you can't see, comes back out through this pipe, and then, um, then into your throttle body past the butterfly valve. Now the butterfly valve in here, in the throttle body, is the, um, is the valve which actually controls the amount of air which goes to at least the valves, and then the valves lifting controls how much air actually goes into the cylinder. So the, the manifold pressure is a, um, is a function of how much air is being allowed past the butterfly valve, and then how much air is being let into the actual cylinders. So you can understand there, there's a difference between your boost pressure which is what's in, front of the, um, what's in front of the butterfly valve and your absolute manifold pressure and then what your actual cylinder pressure is. So tuners actually take all of that stuff into account when they're tuning the engine. Now, so the air rushes out, comes up through the pipe and passes the airflow sensor here. Now the airflow sensor is absolutely critical to this as well, but we'll cover that a little bit later on. So what the blow off valve is doing is bleeding off excess pressure. And what I mean by excess pressure is you can imagine the, the air is rushing out of the turbo or out of the supercharger or whatever you've, whatever you've got, pressurized, and then it reaches the butterfly valve. Now if that butterfly valve is closed, so if you're in a closed throttle state, there's nowhere for that air to go. So you can imagine it's just sitting in between and it's being forced out still because the supercharger or the turbo is still running at this stage, so it's still compressing air, but there's nowhere for that air to go. Now that can create two scenarios. The first scenario is when you get that compressor surge sound, which sounds like this. Now compressor surge is when the fins of the turbo or the fins of the supercharger are still spinning, but the air is actually kind of being forced back past the blades. So you can imagine if these are the turbo blades, and the air is rushing this way, every time it passes a blade, it kind of makes a t -t 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 kind of sound. And that's what you hear as compressor surge. The other thing that can happen is you get the dose sound, which sounds like this. Now what dosing is, is it's a mixture of a bit of compressor surge, but also it's a pressure wave, which is reverberating through your system between the, between the, um, between the, um, the butterfly valve and the compressor wheel. So, as the pressure wave travels back and forth through the system, you get that kind of doot, 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 doot noise. Um, and the length of the piping actually determines how, how long it is between the zoot-toot-toos, if that makes sense. Uh, it sounds very unscientific, but that's how it actually works. So the function of the blower valve is to, um, is to actually bleed off that excess pressure. So a lot of people think that that dose sound is the blower valve. It isn't, the dose sound is the pressure wave inside the system. The blow-off valve is what creates that kind of sound. And sometimes when, when it does vent, you do hear a little bit more compressor surge as well. If the spring pressure is tight, you're still getting a little bit of, um, a little bit of compressor surge. And when it opens up, it actually allows that sound to escape, which is kind of what gives you that sound. So the blow-off valve's function in all of this is to bleed off the excess pressure created when the compressor is still spinning 
but the butterfly valve is not allowing all of the air which is being pressurized to actually pass into the cylinders. So how it works is there's a little cylinder inside the, um, inside the blow-off valve itself and I'll show you this in just a moment. And what happens is that's spring-loaded and that spring pressure actually f causes, causes, the, um, causes the valve to be closed along with the vacuum pressure when, um, when, that's, um, when, the, when the engine's under load. So if you're accelerating or you're on, under idle conditions, the pressure on the top side of the valve is, is more than the pressure on the bottom side of the valve because the engine's consuming the air. So that valve is closed. And then what happens is when you, when you lift off the throttle, suddenly the, you've got a much greater pressure on the intake side of the valve than what you do on the vacuum side of the valve. Now the reason for that pressure difference is because the butterfly valve is closed, but the cylinders are still sucking in air. So you've got a vacuum on the intake side, or on the intake manifold side of the butterfly valve, which is creating a vacuum in the, in the, um, the, um, the top of the blow-off valve as well. So when you've got that vacuum there, coupled with the additional pressure inside the, um, inside the charge side of the, um, inside of the system, that pushes the valve up and allows the excess pressure to escape. So hopefully that makes sense. So you've got a, a spring-loaded and vacuum-loaded valve in there, which opens when the pressure is greater on this side and closes when the pressure is greater on the other side. Now the idea when you're setting it up is to set the spring's pressure exactly right so that, the, um, so that the valve becomes closed just as the car's returning to idle. Now I can't really show you on this car, but what I can show you is a clip from my old WRX showing you exactly how that valve behaves as you're returning to idle. So, so I'll show that to you right now. Okay, so the next thing to understand is a few different types of blow-off valves. Now, you've got what you call a, well, a factory blow-off valve, which is typically just a diaphragm, which is spring-loaded. And um, that works a little bit differently from a, from a standard bypass valve, which is what this is. Now, the diaphragm-style valve typically tends to leak pressure over a certain amount, and that's to, um, that's to help emissions. And it also tends to close a little bit slower, again, to help emissions as well just so you're not getting any excess fuel being burned um, when, you're, um, when you're lifting off the throttle. So they're not always the most, efficient, um, the most efficient design in the world because they're designed more to pass emissions rather than for performance. So a bypass valve like this one, it's designed so that it closes much quicker than a diaphragm style valve and that means that you get much sharper throttle response because you can imagine as soon as you step on the throttle and that butterfly valve opens, there's already pressure inside the system. So it reduces a lot of that input lag and turbo lag that you would have. It's not such an issue with a supercharger, but I did find when I switched to, um, when I switched to this valve, it did actually improve the throttle response quite a bit. So you can see here there's a pipe that runs back up to the intake from the valve. So when the pressure is released, when the valve opens, that air runs back into the intake and it then goes back into the system again. Now an atmospheric blow-off valve vents that air out to the atmosphere instead of plumbing it back into the intake. And there's a third type of blow-off valve as well which is a, um, it's a hybrid valve or a twin port valve and what that does is it bleeds some of the air out to atmosphere and some of the air back into the intake. Now the reason for their existence is quite simple and we'll cover that now. So there's a lot of talk online about atmospheric blow-off valves being bad for your car, making it run rich and just destroying your performance and being bad for your engine. And it's actually very simple to understand the reasons why people say that and how it actually applies to your car. So you'll find that it actually is true. For the, it's not going to destroy your engine, but it can actually be detrimental to performance for some cars, but other cars it's not a problem at all. So. How to understand that is simply the position of your airflow sensor. Now, there's a couple of sensors on most cars, but again, we're just looking at what's in front of the um, in front of the butterfly valve. So we've got our airflow sensor here, and you can imagine that as the air comes into the engine, it's pressurized. It comes out, comes up the piping, 
and it's measured by this sensor. Now, the function of that is to tell the engine control unit, the ECU, exactly how much air is in the engine at any given point in time. Now, that's absolutely critical to engine performance because obviously the engine needs to know how much air there is there so it knows how much fuel to inject to create the perfect air fuel ratio for combustion so you can imagine if you've got more air, if you've got more air in the system than the um, than the ECU thinks there is you're going to be running lean which means you've got a hotter explosion which is very dangerous for the engine and if you've got less air in the engine than the um, than the ECU thinks there is then you're going to be running too rich you're going to be injecting too much fuel so what happens is um, in this system, as you can see, because the air is coming in and it's being pressurized and it's being measured just before the throttle body, when that valve opens, it's bleeding air back into the intake. But regardless of how that happens, that air is still within the system and it's still being measured by that airflow meter once it goes into the engine. So the engine knows, well, the engine control unit knows exactly how much air is inside the engine at any given point in time. Now, if you were to move that sensor to before the blow-off valve. And remember again that in my case, the blow-off valve is extremely close to the compressor, so we're talking about it would have to be here. But on a car that had, say, say the blow-off valve was here, if you had that pressure sensor anywhere behind that blow-off valve, you can imagine that when that air is vented, if it's being plumbed back, it's still gonna be measured by the sensor. So if the sensor's here and that air is being plumbed back, it's going through a second time, but it's still passing through that sensor. So the engine management system still knows exactly how much air is in the system at any given time. If you vent that air to atmosphere, however, if it's coming out of the system, out of the closed loop, you can imagine the air comes in, it gets measured by the, um, measured by the sensor. So the ECU thinks that that air is going into the engine. Now, if you then vent that air off to atmosphere, suddenly you've got a scenario where the ECU thinks that that air is going into the engine, but in actual fact, that air has been vented out to atmosphere. So what happens is when you lift off the throttle, suddenly the car's got a whole lot less air than it thinks is there. It dumps a whole bunch of fuel in to compensate for that air and suddenly you're running really, really rich. Now, what you can do is you can tune the car to compensate for that. So if you know that you're gonna be running an atmospheric blow off valve, you can tune your, you can adjust your tune so that it compensates for that lack of air even though it's being measured. And there's a couple of other things that tuners do as well. Like they don't actually always use this sensor in their tune. So speak to your tuner to figure out exactly how they've, how they've tuned the car to find out whether it's going to be appropriate or not. But the important thing to remember here is that if you're running a factory tune and you want to fit an atmospheric blow-off valve, you need to make sure that your airflow sensor is after the valve. If it's before the valve, then you're going to have problems with running too rich when you, when you lift off the throttle because that air has already been measured and it's not actually going into the cylinders. So the way we can combat this is with a hybrid style blow-off valve. And what that does is it actually lets some of the air out to atmosphere, just a little bit, enough to give you that whoosh sound, but then it vents all the rest of that air back into the intake where it can then be measured. So it's all, because it's already been measured, it's running back into the intake. So there's a lot more air in the system and it's much, closely, it's much more closely matched to what the engine management system actually thinks is inside the car. So just quickly to recap, what's happening is the air is being compressed, it's running through, it hits the butterfly valve, if the pressure on the, um, on the intake side of the blow-off valve is greater than the manifold pressure, the valve opens and it vents either to atmosphere or back into the intake. And then as soon as that pressure differential swaps back again, the valve closes and you're back to a standard closed loop system where you've got pressurized air inside the intake. So hopefully that makes sense to you. What we'll do now is we'll actually pull the valve apart and we'll explain how the valve actually works internally and the differences between the different types of blow-off valves. Okay, so let's have a look at the actual blow-off valve itself. Now this one that I'm running here is a TurboSmart compact 25mm valve. And what that 25mm means is that the inlet and the outlet is a 25mm piece of pipe. Now there's different sizes depending on what kind of car it's being fitted to obviously and the kind of boost that you want to run. If you're running a whole bunch more boost, obviously you need wider diameter pipes, but Turbo Smart or any other company will be able to tell you what kind of valve you need for your car, so that's not a problem. Now, the way this one works is you've got your pressurized side, so that's your intake side here, which is sitting on the pipe. So you can imagine in my car, you had the, um, the supercharger was sitting here, and that's kind of bolted there. So that pressure from the supercharger is, is pushing that way. That's the vacuum nipple there, so your vacuum line connects to there. And then there's the spring, which is sitting in there, which I'll show you in a second. 
Now, because this is a twin port blower valve, you've got your plumb back, which is the one that vents back to the intake, but then you've also got this plug here, which you can remove. So at the moment, this is configured to be full plumb back. If I remove that plug and install this little trumpet, that then becomes a dual port blower valve, which is venting to atmosphere and plumb back. So what you need to understand here is that these two ports are actually slightly offset. So the plumb back sits lower on the, um, on the, on the cylinder than the, than the atmospheric one does. So it's, the cutouts are slightly offset. Now, so I'll hold it like that just to demonstrate. So you can imagine when the valve opens, most of the air comes out of the plumb back. And then if the valve, if the pressure is great enough to push the cylinder all the way to the top, then a little bit of the air is vented atmospherically. So when you lift off the throttle, you get a whole bunch of plumb back. And then if, if you've stabbed the throttle hard enough, if there's enough pressure there, then you'll get that little kind of sound popping through there. So, and you can see that trumpet's actually designed with little whistles in there to tune the sound to make it sound really nice. So that's offset there. Now, there are different types of valves as well, which actually allow you to adjust the, um, the differential in other ways. So the go fast bits valves, for example, have a little twisty part that you can turn and there's a little window which slides around and actually determines how much air goes to each port. But the offset method works just as well, I find anyway. It just gives you less adjustability or no adjustability. But the way this works is you've got a spring inside here which you can adjust and that is how you actually determine exactly how much pressure and when, when the valve is going to close. So if there's some, um, you know, if the spring if the spring is too tight, what will happen is the valve will close too soon or won't open at all, and then you get a whole bunch of compressor surge because there's nowhere for that air to go inside the system. If the spring is too loose, then the valve opens too easily, and what you find is that the car will stall when you when you return to idle. So as I showed you before, that valve needs to be closing right as you're returning to idle, and that's what we determine by the spring pressure, and that's how we need to adjust it. So what we'll do now is we'll set this little part aside and we'll actually pull the valve apart and I'll show you how it works. So if we unscrew the cap, try not to let it fly off, you can see there's quite a heavy spring there. And you can see there, there's your, there's your vacuum there. So the vacuum line comes through. So the function of spring pressure and, um, and vacuum is what determines the amount of pressure on the top side of the valve and then how it differentiates between that side and the, um, and the compressed side. So we'll take that part off. Now, there's also a couple of little washers in here as well, which I've added just to give me a little bit of additional, whoops, try not to drop them, just to give me a little bit of additional spring pressure as well, and they're included in the kit, so we'll set them aside. Now, if we push the cylinder out, you can see that's the actual cylinder that creates the seal. So it slides up and down inside the valve. And hopefully you can see just there, looking through the plumb back side, you can see that opens and closes. Now that's machined to be a really solid fit and you can see there's a little washer in the bottom there. So Turbo Smart's got a really, really nice design. I've seen some other cheaper valves where that's really rough and it's really not creating a very good seal and I'm convinced that under boost conditions that would leak a little bit, but this one doesn't leak at all, I can guarantee it. It's a very, very tight, solid fit. So you can see that valve, that, that cylinder travels up and down with the spring, and that's how the blower valve works. So put it back together, drop our washers back in. Yeah. Drop our spring in and close it back up, making sure obviously not to cross thread it. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a better understanding of how a blow off valve works and what its function is on a boosted car. So hopefully you found it useful. If you have, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe button as always. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.